Welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm your host, David Hill. And we've had uh, Joe Hartley on the show two times before, and we've had lots of phone calls and people seeing us out and about asking us when we're going to have Joe back on the show. And we could have Joe on the show several more times and probably never see all the pictures that he's taken or have come into possession of. So what we have back with us is a lot of old pictures, a few of them we've seen before, but most of the pictures that we're going to look at today we haven't seen before. And joining me to talk about these old pictures is Joe Hartley. And Joe, once again, I do appreciate you spending some time with me so we can talk about these old pictures. I appreciate the invitation. All right, uh, we're going to look at some pictures from Smith's Crossroads back when it was... There's quite a few people who asked to see these again. Uh, they've seen them in our first... Yeah. I think they first, but they they missed some of them, uh -huh. and they said they would like to see yeah. the crossroad. They'd like to see, and they are very interesting for those people who didn't see them before. They yeah. certainly. And then, Joe, we're going to look at some pictures up around uh, Green Mountain Park. Green Mountain Park. Yeah, uh, quite a few of those, and I know the people will find those very interesting. But let's go ahead and begin looking at. Uh, Smith's Crossroads. Now again, we've shown most of these pictures before, but I know uh, a lot of you probably are going to be seeing these for the first time. So, Joe, the very first picture we're going to look at is, uh, what do you think? Is, are they, are, these are aerial views. These, this were, is these the, were taken from an this airplane. Is the oldest one I know of. All right, so this is actually Smith's Crossroads as it was at that time, and the big house there in the center of the picture. Who's that's Irvin Smith. That's it's, Irvin Smith's That's house. where the crossroad got its name. And this square building, the square building is the original the, garage. Okay, so the, uh, the square building uh, to the top of the picture above the house is his original... Well, no, he was in town and then he moved. Uh, then he, he was in town to Western Auto, present Western Automobile, and then he, then he moved down here. I think it was 45, I believe yeah. his daughter told me. So this picture we're looking at right now, uh, it's close to late it's 40s. Close, yeah, it's, it's late 40s. Okay. Now that's the next one, it, old, the next oldest one that I know of. Okay, so uh, the, the garage is no longer there, or the garage has been added on to. It is, that, that's the original. The original garage right there, and then they just added to it. So they've added a restaurant. Restaurant. And, then and the, the motel in the back. The motel back there in the back. So this, this is... The lower part of this has never been filled in. It's still a, just a big bank all the way around. Yeah, so they just brought in a bunch of uh, dirt and filled in around there. Uh, Irvin Smith's house is not is shown that, here, but it would yep. be right off the uh, yes. the right side of the picture. So if you were looking from right to left, you would be traveling north. You're going, this is going north, left. From Out right, here is going to Wilkesboro. Yeah, the, the road that goes up the picture is uh, headed toward Wilkesboro. Now here's a much better that shot one, of the... That's um, about the same time. It's just from a different angle. Yeah, so again, the original garage is... Uh, it's, it's there. That's part of it. It's there the to, on the left side, and to the front of it was... Uh, they added on. Added and on the right side is the restaurant. All right, so this was a car dealership, a garage, uh, a restaurant, a motel. motel in the back. Okay. Then, this picture, they made a circle. They done away with the crossroads and made a circle, which was way wrong. It just didn't work out at all. And uh, it's still Irvin Smith's house is here. The, the garage and all that, it's the same thing as the we're, we're, Yeah, we're the, the picture crossroads. that we were looking at just a moment ago. Not much has been done in the way of a house or all that's the same or building. It's all the same. The only change is the crossroads, which was circle. changed into a circle. 
About what year, Joe? I don't know. I don't. I don't know okay. that. I guess if we could get a better look at those cars down there, we would know. But hard to tell from from here. And again, if, uh, if if people are looking at the circle and we're looking up the picture, that would be traveling north up three. That's three twenty one north. And Joe, do you remember how long the circle was in place before nope, they? I don't remember. Decided that was a mistake, and they put the crossroads back in it. That was that's the same picture. Same time, yeah, just, but it's just a from different a different angle. angle. And again, looking up the picture, yeah. that, that's headed toward Wilkesboro. Uh, I don't know, hard to tell. Some of those cars look like uh, early 50s. They uh, pro that's probably about right. But what's surprising, Joe, in all the pictures that we've looked at, we, we know Smith's Crossroads today and all the traffic associated with it and all the pictures that we've looked at there's so no far there's no traffic there's no traffic there's nobody nobody on there. this one we do have uh, one car i guess just coming out of the circle and then there's one further up the road headed toward wilkesboro but uh, in, in the pictures that we've looked at so far the, the that's the motel which so this is taken probably from mervyn smith's front yard front yard that's where he was you see, all of this is gone. None of this, that, every bit of it's gone. Irving Smith's house, the motel, all of the garage, all yeah, of Yeah, so that. actually the, the restaurant that the restaurant we're looking at now is, I guess, Burger King. Sits it's right about where Burger King is at. All of that's gone. Uh, and again, hard to tell from these cars. Could be, again, early 50s. They're in the early 50s. Looks like a 53 Chevrolet sitting there. Now this picture, Joe, is not exactly of Smith's Crossroads, but if you traveled uh, north from the crossroads, up at the top of this picture on the right is Valmede School. Valmede School. And what, what is that? Uh, is is that, that a bridge? They built, I think the state did this. They built a bridge overhead for the school children to get across the highway. And you see on that picture, there's only one car on it and it's parked down the bottom. That's the only one. But they still put this bridge in for the, to help the children cross the road. And uh, somebody asked me the other day, said, is what happened to the bridge or was there a bridge or something? And I told him I had a picture of it. He said, I want to see it. Yeah. So maybe, I hope he'll see this. Well, and to give uh, our viewers a perspective that is Valmede School Valmede up School. there and this Valmede Fire Department is Valmede right on, Fire the, on Department. the right well from where is this car is parked Valmede Fire Department would down be down on the right or just over here on the right and, and on the left it's Holiday Superette it's over here on the left side where this is a, a store building at that time yeah so this little this house and uh I guess that's a little, looks like a little store of some sort. It's got a sign on it. It's but, a store. But the yeah. buildings there on the left side of the picture is where it's the Holiday Super Ed now. The Super Ed is now. And what looks like an unfinished road it's not, over it's here not on the paved. right. Now it's the road. It turns right. That's Creekway coming and out. And goes down into North Main Street. Yeah. And so again, to the right of the parked car is the Valmede uh, Fire, Fire Department. Fire Department, yeah. And this... Uh, Unfinished road there is. Uh, That's all we know today need. is Creekway. Okay, Joe, we're going to move now to these pictures uh, up at Green Mountain Park. And before we start looking at these pictures, uh, <laughs> tell me what little history you know about uh, that. What what kind of project or works was going on up there? I was at a yard sale one day. And a, a drawer had been pulled out of a vanity or something, and it was sitting full of brown envelopes. And I pulled one of them out, and it was full of negatives. And on the front of the, this envelope that it was in, it had Lenore WW on it. And I didn't know what that was. Well, I pulled the negative out, and the, you'll see one of them. And I saw it had this team of mules pulling this thing, and it had 1928 no, 1925 R28, I don't remember which it was, and it's the Lenore Waterworks. And Ben Howard, the city engineer, he was, uh, they sent him to build a dam 
on this little on this creek to furnish water for the city. And that's what all these people are doing. They're building the dam, laying the pipe in the ground, and all of that was done by hand or with a bunch of mules. It, if they'd have had one bulldozer and one backhoe, they could have laid off 25 men and done it easy. But this all was done by hand. And I've got a lot of pictures. Oh, I didn't bring them all. There's so many mm -hmm. of them. But it shows how they did this work. So these pictures were taken... Uh 1925 yeah, or it was either 25 or 28. I can't tell there. exactly which it is. But so probably different. then most of the people that we're going to be seeing in these pictures were born in the late 1800s, right. 1890s yes. perhaps. Yes, because all these people looks like they're 25, 35 years old. Yeah. So or all older. The, all the people that we're going to be seeing pictures of are, they're not here. Are people I don't that, think. Uh, unless they're uh, 100 and some years old, yes. they've they're no longer with us. Okay, Joe, so the first picture we're going to look at from this group shows several men, uh, one of them down in a ditch. Uh, they've, uh, I guess, by hand? By hand. Have they, dig all that. they dug that ditch and are laying, they're laying water big, lines? They're laying big cast iron pipe they call it an A-frame. It's got three legs, tripod, with a hoist on it. And they had to pick that pipe up with the hoist and lay it down in this ditch and cover it up by hand. All that, this whole, all the pipe were done like that. So each time they laid a section, obviously they had to move all disassemble yeah. or move, or move to the in next some section. fashion that, that tripod to the next section. I wonder, I wonder, Joe, how they got the sections of pipe through there. Did I have no idea. That's hard to tell uh, unless we knew somebody who knew how this contraption worked. They had to, I reckon, use mules and, and pull up. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, this next picture, again, shows that, it shows that about tripod... The, yeah. uh, Contraption that they put together and the, and the wheel hoist. pulley system that they've got to handle the pipe. All right, but now of course they're not in the woods here, so I'm sure that made uh, that was easy. Made, yeah, there. this was easy work. But again, they had to move and set each section of pipe using this. Most of the pipe in those days was about 20 feet long, but it still took a lot of sections. Now you've got these two gentlemen standing out in the middle of perhaps a cornfield. Corn field. Yeah. And what, what, are, what are they doing? They, I don't know how far this pipe might be from the dam, but they blocked both ends off and he's got a pump and a, and a big gauge on the, you see it real plain, and it's got 90, he pumps that, check for leaks, and it's got 90 pounds on the gauge, so he got very few leaks, or he couldn't get that much pressure on it. And they're just a test in the pipes, what they're doing. I wonder how far they uh, would run a section of pipe he, before they no would test it again. It could be three or four hundred feet yeah. that they're testing. But that... And it's right in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah, but that looks like the end of the line, unless... Well, they block, it, they block it off. They block it off so they can test it. Yeah. Then they put the new pipe, start right on that. Yeah, because they don't have a ditch dug nope, yet. No, they've got to uh, dig that. Be on that Ball point. by hand. Mm. Well, I guess we, uh, we take for granted uh, the equipment that we've got today, the bulldozers and the backhoes that you talked about. Now, here is this part of... Uh, that, dam? It, that's part of the dam itself. They had a steam boiler with an engine on top of it. Years ago, all the sawmills out in the counties, that's what they used to saw with. If you had water to supply it and something to burn, that's all you needed. You didn't need no power. As you, there's a steam build up. They had a, they call it an injector on the the boiler and it put water in the boiler and then you had steam to pull this engine and, and they used it, this one they had two here one of them pulled their rock crusher and one of them they had a, a big old-timey cement mixer and it had its own engine 
I guess now. And mm -hmm. they poured, mixed and poured all of this concrete. They, they crushed the rock and done all that theirself and poured this concrete down, which is still there. So this, uh, what looks like water on the, the bottom right-hand corner is well, that's probably steam. steam. This is steam leaks on these borders. So we still got those sections of pipe running through there. So all those... I don't know what that what that may have been. All right, but that uh, evidently was the first section of the dam, of what the building would become of the, the dam. dam. Now again, let's remind our viewers as we're looking at these. This this is all up at what now is Green Mountain Park. Green Mountain Park, and that was and they, they have their lake. That's there. There's all this. It's still there. But that was to be the water source for. No, no, no. It was. No, now they get they get it out of the lake. But that, at that time, that was all the water source for Lenore. Oh, okay. All we right had now. that one on before. I think it's an international. Somebody I said at first thought it was something else, but somebody said that was an international, a 1924 tractor, uh, pulling this road machine, and. Uh, these one, two, three, four, five, six men on it and around it. And that's the radiator is on the back of the engine. Most of the time, the radiator is on front. Yeah, but on this the, one's on the back. Got the engine sitting right out there in the very front. Yep. Uh, the radiator actually sitting in the middle of the tractor. But the tractor is pulling what would be an early motor grader or a, a road a, scraper a, a road scrape yeah because it's got uh, got the the blade there and in the middle and, and see then all of the wheels are, are metal no rubber tires nothing like it they're all metal well, I bet wheels. that was a comfortable ride wasn't it <laughs> yeah but the these guys are yeah, but these guys are cutting what do you, what do you think they're building a road in the green mountain they're, park they're, they're machining the road All right, now here again, uh, at the same time, we got guys that are, I guess they're moving dirt there. It they, takes three this mules. Pan. takes three mules with this big pan shape. It's long, it's about six feet long and a couple of feet square, and they scoop that dirt up with these three mules, and then they dump it. And uh, that's the hard way. That's as hard a way as you can do any kind of work, I reckon. But well, it's hard on the mules anyway. It's hard on the mules. <laughs> that was, uh, and that mule up at the, uh, he's up at the top left. Something has disturbed uh, him. I don't know what. He yeah, looks like he's, he's ready to leave. He's got some questions that he's looking for answers for. But this uh, probably was just a continuous operation. They they would scoop the dirt and I don't and just don't, fall in I line. Tell you. Dump the dirt and then go yeah. back for a. You could probably find pool. this place to go down there and look. It's probably there. All right, here we've got the mule team. That's just a group of, they a bunch of mules. I don't know what they do. All right, but you got the three mules, or is that five mules five, pulling right. one? Is that, I guess that's one of those pans that they're pulling? I guess. Yeah, so here we've got, it uh, looks like five. I have one picture. I didn't make one of it and bring it. There must be 20, 20 mules on the, or more on the one picture, all hooked up to something. Mm. Well, that was a slow way of doing That's it. That's a slow, hard way to do it. But in 1925 about 25 or so, to that 25 to 28, was, somewhere in there. That was about the best they could do. That's similar to the others. Yeah, it's and a, this picture really, Joe, points out how how well this system worked, even though it was by the hard work. crude uh, equipment and, and mule power. The the, the end results uh, are no different than what would what we would get today. They done good work. The people did with yeah. the mules. So there we got, uh, I guess they're pulling, I don't know if they're pulling one of those pans or if they're pulling that road scrape, but they're just, as you say, machining the road. 
looks like we've got a dog right there in the very middle of the picture right there yeah. to the side of uh, those guys. That, they made them a little railroad thing out of wood to roll their truck on and they're hauling rock to their little rock crusher. So these rails are actually made out of wood? I think they are. Yeah, it looks like it. That doesn't look I think like about metal. like two before or something. Did they? And they were just rolling that. It went. They. I've got the other pictures that showed it. They roll that to the crusher. The crusher's down below, and they dump them out. It goes in the top of the crusher, mm -hmm. and it crushes them. And then they use that to pull, make their concrete. That guy in the upper left uh, looks like he's got a pole. So I guess they were drilling and Pro using dynamite. That's the way they done it. Drilled it by hand. And use dynamite. Well, again, that's a hard way of doing it because they had to load <laughs> it that was a hard way. stone on that little car by hand. And then I wonder how the cart got back down to the crash. I think this went downhill a little bit because they got a, a scotch under a wheel to keep from rolling off. Yeah, probably. That's the completed dam. After it was finished, the water comes out and goes, I don't know, where, there's not a pump, because this is a gravity feed, I'm sure, and the pump house, or whatever this house is. But now this, this is still at Green Mountain Park, the dam is. Yeah. But about what time do you think, though, that the dam was finished, if they started in 24, Oh, it probably took... Or maybe they started it two or three years. And it, ended it probably took two or three years to do all that. And was this still up at Green Mountain Park? <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. And uh -huh. I think, I think what they're doing here, that's a homemade plow. And that tractor, I think he's a plow in a ditch all he can, so they can take shovels. And dig that yeah, ditch. They're just loosening that up. Yeah, that's now, what they're doing. I think that's what they're doing. Because I think yeah. that might be a roadbed. Through well, there. It could be. Yeah, but evidently that's what they're doing. They're they're just loosening that up to make yeah. it easier to. To where they can move the dirt easier with the shovel. Good idea, but that looks like a homemade. It's a plow homemade. Back it, there, it's a homemade plow. And got the crank yeah. there in the front of the tractor. It's that's, got the name. That's a late model tractor. Yeah, it's there. got the name of the tractor on there, but I. I can't uh, tell the, what kind it is, <laughs> but it's probably something we wouldn't do today, but it worked, didn't nope. it? Nope. No way. You couldn't hire a man to do that today. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, Joe, we're going to move from the 1920s up to 1940. 40. And uh, uh, as most people know or remember or perhaps heard their parents or grandparents talk about the 1940 flood. We've got some pictures here of, uh, of what the, some sections of Caldwell County looked like as a result of the 1940 flood. Now that's at Mortimer. So those, I mean, all of these are, are at Mortimer. Okay, so all the pictures we're going to look at are from The CC camp, one of the officers, see that army, he made all these pictures. There's about 30 or 40 of them. And a Mr. Bill Vines, he lives a, a close to Carey's flat. He died two or three years ago. He gave me all of these pictures and permission to copy them. Yeah. He had a bunch of them. And he worked at the CC camp a long time. He was an instructor. We got a picture somewhere uh -huh. of, and he's on it. And I asked him, I said, what does an instructor do with all these boys are working out in the woods all the time? He said, you didn't realize it, but the people, it's just like Army, they sent them up there, and these people had never had a shovel in their hand. They yeah. didn't know how to use a shovel, and he had to show them, and said that was, made him an instructor, and that way he got $35 a month. Otherwise, you get 30 and you had to send $25 a month home. You could not keep it. All you got was $5. Mm -hmm. But everything was furnished. Your food, your clothing, your medicine, your doctor, everything, just like Army. It was Army, no question about it. Yeah, we're going to look at a picture in, toward the end of this group that shows them. Yeah, showed them in, all. In formation. And yeah. really, just looking at it, you'd think it's it was all a military Army. It tells the 
captain's name, the lieutenants, and all this, and the army numbers and so forth. Yeah, they even had them organized. Uh, oh yeah, by camps and, and if companies. You, and if you left left that job, went AWOL. Let's put it that way. Then yeah. you automatically went in the regular army. You was gone, and they they knew that, and they didn't leave. And of course, the CCC camps were. Uh, came into place in the 1930s. Uh, in the country 30, was yeah. in a depression. After 36. Oh, I remember them very well. You remember, boy, that far back? Yeah. <laughs> okay, the first picture we're going to look at from Mortimer, the 1940 flood. What in the world is that guy doing that right there? Is Mr. Dupree, was his name. He's standing on top of his store. Now, I don't know what he's doing. To the far left, you'll see a gas pump. Yeah. You'll see the big bulb on top, and you had to pump your gas up. It had a 10-gallon big glass tank-looking thing on top. You had to pump your gas up yourself and get it, and the water is way up on that pump, and you see where it's at on this store building. I don't know what he's doing on top. I don't know how he got up there. Yeah. But now that's Wilson Creek at Mortimer. But there was a lot of water from somewhere. It just it looked like it's impossible. Well, now, Joe, I don't know how true it is, but I heard from somebody who heard from somebody who probably heard from somebody that he's actually up there either putting a chain or a rope around that chimney because he was going to tie it to a tree somewhere to keep that I store doubt from, I wouldn't doubt from it going bit. downstream. But that's Mr. Dupree. I remember him. Well, but it's hard to imagine water, that much water, going down Wilson's Creek. Yeah, it is. Hey, just think about down at Brown Mountain Beach, something like that, oh, or all yeah. down. All right, the next picture of the flood, and of course, mostly what we see is water. And again, this is up at Edgemont. That's just at... That Mortimer is all I know. Or more, yeah, Mortimer. It's, it's close to camp because this, it shows their machinery. Yeah, a bunch of um, equipment in there. Uh, really hard to tell what everything tell. is there. See, these, all of these, most of these pictures were made. It's dark, cloudy, and rainy, and all that, and they're not there. You can't get good pictures like that, yeah. not in them days. But you can still see it, the, the machinery. But it looks like the house there. It's a house the way back upper there. Upper center still might be on high ground hard to say but it looks like the, it's either still sitting above water or the water's right up to it that shows there i reckon that was a wrecker that they had yeah, it up looks there. like a wrecker so you can see where the water's at there and i don't know if that thing behind the wrecker is i don't know if that's a building or i don't a, know what that is the top of some kind of machinery, but and uh, before the flood came, of course, these buildings and these old vehicles they were parked far enough away from it didn't wash the water. Away. The yeah. water just raised up. That's all. But it's still up over the tires where the, where it is now. That's just below the next picture. Is just below Edgemont in the background, in the top center is the old depot, and this is a bridge down at, right below that, the, the flood had washed away. And the CC camp, they're rebuilding all of that. And uh, they started on that, places like that right quick, because uh -huh. people couldn't travel. Now the railroad was gone then. It had been taken out uh, two or three years, two years before that, about that. But the guys from the CCC camp, they uh, stayed on, the up, ones on up in the 40s. Yeah, yeah they were building a bridge back. Done a story before on the CCC camp and those guys. And yeah. Actually, when World War II came along, that pretty well put an end to the CCC camp because they all went yep. into the military. But Most of them went in the military, right. But they did a lot of very useful projects. They built bridges, and they built roads. They had that all that country up there was as neat, clean. They had trails they built, and they done. They what they did wasn't worth nothing. But they didn't have a job, and they put them all to work, in up in the mid thirties, put them all to work at a dollar a day, 
because they didn't have a job, they didn't have any money. The one story I told about catching the fish below Edgemont, right below that picture, uh -huh. uh, two things I didn't tell that I should have. The one was they was catching those catfish to have something to eat. That's the reason they wanted them. All right. And the second reason, they was free of charge. The old lady at the, at, over at the hotel, she fixed them and didn't charge them for their food. And because in those days, they didn't have no money. I would think an uh, hourly rate then, see that was in, the, was in the early 30s and possibly the 20s, and I don't know. But uh, the hourly pay then was probably, could have been 30 or 40 cents an hour. You don't, I don't know. Yeah. But they did that to have something to eat. It didn't cost them anything. And that, I didn't mention that in when we were talking about catching them. But that's the reason they done that. But the standard have pay to, for these guys was a dollar a day. Thirty. Uh, no, no, $30 that's a CC a boy. That's a CC camp boy. Now, the railroad men, I was thinking oh, yeah. about that done the fishing. Yeah. Uh, my dad was one of them. And they done that to have something to eat, and it didn't cost them anything. But now the CC boys, they all get, all of them, they got a dollar a day. But they could only take $5 a month. That's all they was allowed. They had to send $25 home a month yeah. so their people would have something to eat for them. Well, again, like you said earlier, just about all, just about everything they needed was provided to them. They had, they had to everything, sleep just and, like the Army. And food to eat and clothes to oh, wear. Oh, yes. Now this is a picture of one of the CCC camps. That's right? the Buffalo CC camp. I'm pretty, and it could be Globe, but I think I think it's Buffalo. It's one of the two I know. See, they had three. They had Mortimer, Globe, and Buffalo in this county, and uh, I think that's the I think that's the, the Buffalo. Yeah, of course, up there, at Mortimer. There's only one building still standing that. Yeah, and I don't think it's original. I think yeah. it's something else. It's about all that at Mortimer. I think it's all gone. But the one at uh, Buffalo and the one I don't in the know Globe, about that. Now there's that, probably no I don't know. no sign of those things left. I, right? doubt, I expect all of that's gone. All right, we talked about the uh, CCC camp being almost like military, and here actually is a picture of the four o third. Company CCC that, Camp Grandfather Mountain, Mortimer, North Carolina, and then it lists every member of that every unit. member and their names. And uh, Mr. Vines, Bill Vines, he's way up on the top left. Uh, he's instructor. Yeah, uh, he shows them how to use the show. And they're in the very middle of the group. Uh, and they've got their cooks. The they have cooks. their cooks. They've got their dispensary. I don't know which one. It, they have the dispensary, their day room, their re recreation room, their library. Yeah. Here's the whole camp on the bottom picture. Shows the whole camp, a distant picture, but it shows all their names. Yeah, so looking at the pictures around the group picture, in the upper right is a picture of the infirmary. The bottom right is... Well, they've named it Just Camp. Company Street. Yeah. The middle picture on the bottom is Camp View. The bottom left is Recreation Hall, and the top left is a picture of the library. But that's all their men in uniform. I don't know who the, the man in charge, I don't know if he's a captain or who he is. Yeah, it says uh, Carl W. Adams, first lieutenant, and Mr. W. B. Hart, project superintendent. And then it goes on to name all the other folks. And I think that was made in 1938. Seemed like it. Yeah. See if I... There's probably a date. There is a date in there, November... 24th, 1938. I think that's when it was. All right. Let's look at Broy Hill Park. Right that's now, the, the first picture we're going to look at actually is a, is a recent picture. That's a present day park. That shows the lake, that shows the, the deck, and the, how all this. And 
this is where their bathrooms are. All that's at now, behind the, to our left on the picture. Yeah. But that's a looking down uh, where we will see on the other pictures. It's looking down towards the deck where you come into it from. All there. right, and of course there was a reason that we showed this picture first because the next picture we're going to show you is perhaps uh, a picture from almost the same spot, but this look in the same direction. But there's no water. Now there's a big pipe that goes all the way down through. I don't know what it is. And there's a pipe that runs uh, down the center of uh, of the lake. Of the what is the whatever the bottom lake. of the lake. Then on the middle right, that's where the rock quarry was at. It's on the other picture, and this one too. It's there, and it's still there today. Same thing. That big rock quarry. But there's no water. No water. But now, here's a picture of... It, it's rained. <laughs> you think the water I came from it rain? Yeah, well, maybe so. But there's water. It don't look very clean or anything, but there's water in it. I don't think anybody's ever seen these pictures. Any idea when these pictures were taken? Do what? Do you know when these pictures were taken? So the ones that the Wall Brothers made was 1920. To forty, okay. and it's one of them. I have, I don't have no idea when these would have been. So they didn't date them, and I wish they had. But right, now but I, I do know this. On our next picture, I can tell a little bit about it. Yeah. And uh, but the, the, but again, these are pictures of of what is now the Broadway Walking walk park. park, right? Now years ago, the city built a swimming pool right up from about where that picture was taken from, the other one. There it is. Here's the spool. Now this is about close 1946. I know that. Because uh, Mr. Winkler that got uh, had, I got the picture from, uh, he remembers when they built the pool and he used to swim in it. So he, And he said the best he can remember is about 1946. All right. Now this is all gone. And you still got that. That's rock where it's rock still there, just like there. it was then. It's still the same thing, and it's been like that, I guess, quite a few years. Right. Now, here's a picture that I know a lot of viewers are going to enjoy, and actually we got uh, another one after it. This is the swimming pool. That's the pool. At Boy Hill Walking Park. Now, this is approximately 1946. So, 1946. And a lot of these people are still still around, still around, so they can see themselves in 1946 at the swimming pool. And the, what I Hill what Park I Park. think it looks nice about this are their bathing suits. See the bathing suits now; they're not as big as a handkerchief. And these people, they've got suits on, and they're pretty bathing suits. They yeah. are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps you're right, Joe. But it looks like they're having a good time. They, I believe they are. Now, this, this, is, no, this is another picture at, at the swimming pool that, that is no longer at... It's gone. ...at uh, the Boy Hill Walking Park, but they've got a whole bunch There's of a lot folks of people. ...posing for a picture. I've talked to quite a few people that used to use that pool, go up and swim. Now, Joe, what's the oh, significance of it, this picture? That was a, that's a late couple of years ago. They had this one big old duck, I reckon you'd call him, over to Brawl Hill Park. And everybody knew him, because if you got close to him, that's what he would do. He would stand, roll their head back, and make a noise. And if you got close to it, he'd almost take a chunk out of your leg. Well, he would bite you. Just protecting his property. Then he disappeared one night. They think a fox got it, I don't know, but it disappeared, <laughs> and a lot of people glad of it. <laughs> but he got, he was a, one of the regular people over there all the time, that old duck. Well, he's got two lovely ladies there on his right. So oh, he, yeah. He and, always, and, they, and they followed him all the time. You could see wow. them. They were his girlfriends, I'm sure. All right, now we're a little out of character here, Joe, because uh, all the pictures... Uh, that we've ever looked at that you've had have all been the black and white, but this is a recent picture that you took, again, of 
of the Broyhill Walking Park, but got uh, got a lot of color in that picture. The this big brass plaque is mounted in a large piece of rock that you're looking at in the left center, and uh, in the foreground you can see the top of the little building uh, on the deck, you, and then in the way back in the foreground at Indian Grave Mountain. But I've always thought, I made this about five or six years ago, in October, and I always thought that was the prettiest, the prettiest color picture I ever seen. It's got so many colors, yeah. and it's, uh, and, and that park, you won't find any place in this state it's any prettier than that whole park is about that time of year. Yeah, that, that's It's just right. a pretty place. And it's looked after real good. It's clean. It's neat. And it's, it's looked after. Well, again, this picture's out of uh, character for what we're looking at, but it, it is such a but beautiful picture. But it's part picture. of the park. Now, this one has absolutely that's nothing just to do with this. That's just up in the mountains. That's a, another, uh, another sample of some of the pictures that you take. That's uh, Grandfather Mountain, and as late as last week, a lady called me from Hickory. She seen this picture somewhere, and she wanted to know where I got it, and I told her in 1991, I made this picture. She said, well, said you might like to know, says that lake and 14 acres of land around it, it belongs to me and my husband. And her name is Libby uh, Miller. And there's a log cabin on the left. You don't see it on this picture. Mm -hmm. Dave Rufty in 91 seen that picture. I had one made at Morganton. The water was too dark. The sky was too dark. Everything. And Dave said, that ain't right. He says, bring me the negatives and I'll make you. He wound up, he made 100, 16 by 20s of that picture and named them one day in October. There was a name of it, and it was the 19th of October in 1991, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to sell them. Everybody that had a birthday, I don't care where it's from, if my wife found it out, can I give one of them pictures of them for birth? I said, yeah. Might as well said, yeah. So I don't know what happened to the pictures. They're gone. But he made 100, and he numbered them. Yeah. And he said, now, we're only going to make 100, and that's what he done. But now... But he was able to take that negative and... He took a 35 millimeter negative and made six, I made 100, 16 by 20. I had all sides of different cameras, and I made all sides in color. But that's the one he picked, and he says that's the prettiest one then. So... But now let's remind, uh, let's remind our viewers uh, about your career in photography. No, it's, it's, just, we, it's just a hobby. That hobby, you, that's all it's been. It go real strong for maybe a few weeks and then it's dead for a few weeks and then I'll start back again and uh fellow brought me a roll of him a while back he'd made that down at the beach and he had a lighthouse on it and I developed them for him and printed black and white mm -hmm. and uh, I made him an eight by ten of this of this white this uh, uh lighthouse and a real good picture well, he took it home, his wife seen it, and she took it right then and came up town and bought a frame to frame it. And it's hanging in their house right now. Because she, it's a pretty picture. But the, you've got one of the best pictures right there you'll ever find. We've not seen yet. Well, right, we're going to look at some more pictures okay. there. Well, well, why don't we, let's look at this one now. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is 19 and... 1906 or 1909, I don't remember which of the date, the date was on that picture. All right, but this is a train that came through. Going to Edgemont, getting ready to go to going Edgemont. Going to Edgemont. Getting ready to go to Edgemont. And, uh, but now we're, even, now this is 19. Uh, it's 196 or 9, I don't remember. So, okay. It might be, yeah, there, it'll be on there, I'm sure. Well, it's not on there. Uh oh. But we do have the names of the people. Yeah, Tan Courtney. Now, I've heard Daddy talk about Tan Courtney years and years ago. That's the only name that I and I'm familiar with. I didn't know him. All right, but, but we're uh, lucky enough that somebody has uh, put their names down. And I guess this uh, actually was on the back of of the photo of the original picture. It's but, on the back. But of from it. left to right, 
we have Jack Tuttle, and then there is Jesse Courtney, and then Rose Earnhardt, Catherine Price, Roberta Price, Mina Atkinson, and then on the far right is Tan Courtney. Tan Courtney. I've, but look at their dress. That's, that's what uh, amazes you to see something like that. You see somebody like that today at Tickle the Fire Out. You say, where in the world oh, did yeah. these that? But that was very popular in those days. But these folks are uh, They're big riding, hats, riding the train to Edgemont. Big hats and high top shoes and all that. That was a very popular thing. All right, here we have a picture of uh, the county jail. Huh. Yeah, and the Lenore Police Department. 1948. So these are members of the Lenore Police Lenore Department? Lenore Police Department at that time. Stanley Crisp, he was the, fire, he was the chief, the police chief, and uh, Martin, he was the assistant, and then they had all these other men. I guess practically all of those the policemen are gone. Now, these are the Boy Scout group in front of them. And uh, he's a Talbert boy. He's in charge of the scouts. He died a few years back. He all had an operation and he had problems or something. Anyway, he died and young. But they was a scout troop. And, but all in the background, I knew most of them one time. And, but I think about all of them are dead now. There they might be one or two of them left. Yeah. See, that's in 48. Yeah, you know, the picture is dated June 19th, and You're talking about 50 years plus their age now. So they're all up 70, 80 years old yeah. if they're living. So it's very possible that, that they are living. And certainly the Boy Scouts are, but... In 1948, Joe, where was, where was the jail? That's the, the back of the, of the old courthouse. Okay. You go in the front up on Main Street, yeah. you go out the back door, this is it right here. Okay. You go down the steps and out the back door. Now the present, now they built the next one across the street from it. Yeah. Now it's out on 18 Highway. Right. I don't know where they build the next one. All right, here we have some pictures of, uh, of downtown Lenore. And actually, let's look at this one first, Joe. This is... Um, some lady brought that to me a few weeks back and wanted me to make some off of it. I copied it and made some, and I asked her if I could have one of them, and she said yes. And I told her what I wanted to do with it. So that's uh, South Main. You're looking now. The monuments have been moved. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, Bernhard Seals on the center left. This is mid '60s, probably. Yeah. And over here's the family stamps on the right, and the loan company, and learners, and the different stores and. Uh, blues, it's still there, and uh, I don't know what exact date, but it's, I'm sure, you can tell, you can tell with automobiles most yeah, of the time. Yeah, but especially back in the 60s, uh, collecting those stamps, stamps, was, stamps a, sure. was a big thing, wasn't it? Anywhere you shopped, you had that to be sure to collect those that stamps. That was a very popular thing, the green ones and all of them. Yeah, S&H green stamps. I think... We've had this Greer funeral home on one before. I'm not sure. Yeah. We had some, but I don't know whether that was yeah, it. Yeah, I don't remember. But, but I, I always thought that was such a pretty picture that with the trees on yeah. both sides. I, the one thing I've wondered about, if the sun would have been a shining real pretty on that, that would have been a pretty picture. It's a yeah. pretty picture anyway. And that picture is 70, it could be 80, 70, or 60 years old. Is this house standing today? It's one today? of the Wall brothers made between 20 and 40. But you don't know if the house is still standing today? No, no, it's all gone. All right, but there is a sign, uh, the sign on the left, once you get up on the porch, it does say Greer Funeral Home. Greer Funeral Home. And they then there's a sign over on the right ambulance, also. The ambulance service. Yeah, they, they had also, an ambulance. Yeah, they were also the ambulance service. But that's all gone. And now here we have... Uh, the bottom of the picture says Lenore Funeral Home, but the sign in the yard says Pendry, Pendry. Lenore Funeral Home. Uh, if you happen to know where Kent Coffee Number One, that's the building is burned and the city has bought it and going to tear it down to all this stuff. Yeah, that's right. That joins the. You go by 
this building to go to Kent Coffee Number One. Yeah. It's out on uh, West Harper. It's still there. The now the uh, the vehicle over on the left uh, probably was used as an ambulance. Looks like it's got a siren. Yeah, yeah, it has a siren right there on the, on the fender. On the yeah. fender. And then yeah. the one on the right was probably the uh, that's their the hearse. hearse. Yeah, I believe that's right. But again. Uh, and See, they and didn't have an ambulance service. Yeah, I don't right, recall. The county has now. Up in the, the funeral home's done that. Yeah, a lot of people don't uh, don't remember that before there was a a rescue squad and uh, didn't, uh, an was, EMS unit. All that service was provided by, by yeah, funeral homes. Yeah, the funeral home furnished the ambulances. Okay, Joe. Now we've we've got some other pictures uh, that we've uh, put up on the table. Now this is evidently the Lenore High School women's basketball team. Yep. I don't know what year. I have no I'm, idea what year. It's hard I'm, to tell I from those. Don't uh, know. The lady on the far right with the L on her, her shirt, I know her, and uh, she's Mrs. Willard Church, and uh, her and her husband still living. And I know her real well. That's the only one I know on the whole. She knows them all. Yeah, so I she, don't know. She's she the only know. one. She would I, know when the picture was taken. Oh, she'd know when it was and all about it. And I should have called her and found out. That's what I should have done. But I didn't. So. Well, and That's perhaps a lot of people who will see this will remember. But If somebody wants to, to know about that, I'll find out for them. Okay. Or they can call me Emma. They can do that. All right. So Lenore... High school women's basketball team. Now here we have some more basketball team That's, pictures. That at all I know, it's made at Hudson in 1940. 41, so it says 41, 40, 42. 42. That's when it was made. That's a boys' team, and I don't know who the GHS. I don't know whether that's Gamble. I don't know. It's probably Gamble. It's probably Gamble, but they're the champions, I think. So and uh, they got a little trophy. On top of the basketball, yeah, I, they, so. they had this tournament. I was told, and these are the champion teams. And uh, all right, yeah, because actually all these pictures were taken at the same place. All uh, of them is the same place, and I, I was told it was at Hudson. And the basketball, what's the initials on it? Uh, CMS. CMS. Uh, or whatever. C uh, that could be Collegeville. No, oh, I don't know. CHS. CHS, yeah. Colorful High School, I guess. Is it Yeah, 4142. Yeah. So CHS, 4142 is what that, the writing is on that basketball. Yeah. So Collegeville High School. Probably. 1941-42 men's basketball team. Now here we have HHS, 1941-1942. Uh, that's probably Hudson. Hudson High School. Probably. Women's, oh, I know it's Hudson because yeah, the, basketball team. the fourth lady from left to right in front that's down on her knee, her daughter works for Bernhardt Furniture Company office, and uh, so you're talking, she's dead. This talk lady is dead, and uh, uh, she knows that quite a few of these are living yet. Yeah. Um, but I, she saw that picture. She said, that's my mother, so I made her some for of it. And the lady you're talking about is the, one, the, fourth one the immediate over, right of the basketball. Right of the one holding the basketball. Okay. Now here is a picture again taken at the same know, don't time. Don't know what this is. But That's these just, uh, just a group of ladies. Just a group young of ladies, ladies. Not in uniform, but no. This. So they have had the picture taken That's even the same before, place. either before they played or, or after. after they played. Yeah, it's made at the same time at the same place. I don't know what that means. But there's some nice looking children there, that's one thing. Now here's another school picture. This is a class picture in front of some school. I guess that's Lenore uh, that's Lenore High School, I'm sure. They didn't most of the time they have a sign a telling of that, but yeah. now this is in that group of pictures made twenty to forty or forty one, something like mm -hmm. that. So sometime between but that is Lenore High School, I know that. So this was probably in the in 1940? 40 or 41, right there. possibly 42. That's the newest ones I've got is 42. All right. 
And then this is a, another picture yeah, then the back taken at the same spot. And close to the same time, probably. I mean, with, within a year or two or something. Yeah. Or a different grade, I don't know. All right. The teachers. Again, this was taken in front of the school. Uh, some lady saw that. She named them all. She knew every one of them. Oh, yeah? Well, Joe, let's look at these pictures. And uh, I know we're getting ready to the Rhyme Hotel. Hotel. Now, let's, let's tell our viewers a little history of this place. Where, where was this? For right those at, who don't know. It's where, where the Cononia is at now. And they, there's four hotels. There's Archer, years and years ago, it, part of it burnt. They built it all back. Still was Archer. It's a different building, no part of it. It burned. Then part of it, they built this one back. And then they, they renamed it Carlime. Then most of it burned off, and they rebuilt back to this. And then uh, this one, they tore it down and built built a Cononia. And... Uh, Okay, but the first picture we're looking at is... It's a much older. There's two before this. There's the Archer, number one and number two, and then this one, and then this one. Okay. See, there's part of this one is on this picture. It's a pointed, it's a pointed roof, and this has got a pointed roof. Yeah. So part of it was still there, but... So the second picture of the Carlime is... Uh, that was the last one that... See, this is back in, made back in, it looks like the 50s, according to the cars. No. But it's kind of near now. I would think, Joe, that's the 30s. Now, that's, here's, though, a picture of a structure that's still standing today. Still standing. It's at, out on uh, East Harper, the stoplight at Hospital Avenue. It's just across the street from that. Or these buildings, and I thought years ago was something about the scouts, which it was not. But uh, I've been told what if they're still there. They'd a big, big fir tree or a pine tree of some kind in mm -hmm. front of one of these buildings. Yeah, yeah, they're hard to see driving but through there. Now, it's but open they're then. there. Yeah, there's no trees there then any size. And I don't know what the building was originally built for. I've been told, but I don't remember it. I've been told two or three different stories about it, and I don't know which one's right. Yeah, but those uh, those are still there today. Now, here, Joe, this that is... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can't find anybody. That here's knows. where we need the help. Uh, this this bare, been, Just barely visible in the bottom center are two vehicles that look like late 1920s, or 30s. There's got to be... These are then those I bought from 20 to 40. The Wall Brothers made them, and I, mm -hmm. it's got to be, it could be in the 20 easy, but I don't know where the building's at, and mm -hmm. I've showed it to picture different people. Well, maybe somebody will recognize oh, it. Oh, there's somebody will know where it's looking at. Looking at those cars there in the front. It's a, it's uh, a pretty building. Late 20s, early 30s. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time before we ran out of pictures. Uh, so, Joe, I guess we're probably going to have to have you back on here sometime <laughs> later so we can continue looking, well, at, looking thought, at all these pictures. Well, I always thought three strikes was out. Well, it may be so. <laughs> yeah. But if this is the last time you've been on here, I appreciate you coming. Yeah, but, uh, I appreciate it. you still people, got a lot of pictures. I know that people well, find I hope it very the interesting. People it sees this will enjoy it, enjoy the pictures as much as I have. I've enjoyed looking at these things. I do that at home, so I hope they enjoy it. Well, and they do. From the comments we hear, they they certainly do look uh, or enjoy looking back at those old pictures and the way Lenore and Caldwell County used the to be. The one lady called me. She said, I watched you on the television and says, when you come on, my set blowed up. And I said, well, <laughs> that's just tough. <laughs> I don't know how many times that's happened. <laughs> That may have happened more than once, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Joe Hartley, thank you very much for being with me again.